YouTube, welcome to Cafe No Mind. Welcome to our reactions in Dream Theater. We are going to react to their song, Hollow Years. This is going to feature on our Winterfest. This will be a first time single take honest reaction to Hollow Years of Dream Theater. Yeah, I have heard this song in oh, the past. My first time. I do remember bits of it. I don't know what it's about, but I do remember listening to them. This song by Dream Theater hmm. in the past. Okay. So uh, let's see what Kirti thinks about it mainly and then I'll chip in a little bit later to keep it honest, sincere and impromptu and totally unscripted. Once the stone 
later. This was pleasant. This was pleasant all, all the way. Wow, it's still, uh, you have to wait for it to go down completely. Wow, I, I can't imagine I was listening to Dream Theater. I, uh, I thought they were supposed to be um, heavy, heavier than heavy metal. But this was soft. This is soft rock, I would say. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely beautiful. And thought-provoking. This is gentle. Wow, yeah, it's still it's one, okay. of the, one of those really thought-provoking songs. And uh, thought-provoking because you're, you're, for me, it's like I'm listening to the words pretty carefully today and so I then, realize that okay. it can be difficult to interpret these words as a counselor, as a psychotherapist especially, not just as a music reactor. For me, it's pretty difficult to sit on one side of the fence on this one. The first verse was quite hard-hitting. It's about someone who possibly ended his life uh, or uh, left this world much earlier than was expected of him. Uh, the second one was about a girl. Uh, but uh, the first verse was pretty hard hitting to start off the song. And then that epic chorus, there were two parts to the chorus. You know, one about the burial process uh, of this soul that has uh, uh, left this world. And the second is uh, about, you know, the when you'll understand why they've done it or why they are this way. You know, when you, uh, that that huge burden that is on your shoulders, once that is lifted off you, then you'll understand. That's what Dream Theater is essentially trying to tell us, the listeners. Once that cloud that is pouring rain on you, on your head and making you, drenching you completely, once that cloud vanishes, then you'll understand. You know, why they've done this or why they acted this way. So, uh, but that epic line that completely makes sense to me is the crashing down of those hollow years. You know, emptiness for me, I practice a lot of meditation in uh, many forms and many aspects of my life. So it's not like I'm one of those traditional uh, gurus, meditation people who sit there and in one spot and then you know that they are meditating. I'm that kind of person. Meditation is a part of my daily regimen. So whenever I'm eating, whenever I'm talking to others, whenever I'm spending time in silence, whether I'm working, I might do a bit of meditation. It's my own technique. Maybe I've harnessed it over the years on trips to Thailand, trips to Goa, reading a lot about it, watching videos about it on this platform as well as elsewhere. So one of the things we long for in meditation, uh, at least people like me, is a certain emptiness. So, But emptiness is a two-edged sword. It can be a boon, it can also be a curse. This is where it is a curse. You know, the hollow years, when you find that emptiness in whatever you're going through, every day seems like a drudgery to go through because of that emptiness you possess. So that emptiness can be a real curse at that time. You, you don't have a purpose. You don't know what you want to do with your time on earth. You don't even know where to start looking at what to do with your time left on earth. So you're completely trapped in that emptiness. So emptiness is not the emptiness I seek and I receive every day in meditation. This emptiness is really dangerous. It's that hollow in hollowness that you feel, that those hollow years you go through, where you feel totally maybe invisible, totally empty, totally worthless, so to speak, totally hopeless, so to speak. Beautifully written song, but yes, there it's kind of for me as a psychotherapist and counselor, I am against suicide. I've seen enough of it. I've witnessed enough people talk about it. I've witnessed enough people say that they want to do it because they find this they they're going through this kind of hollow years or emptiness or lacking hope. So for me, I'm, my stand on suicide. Or finding the easy, taking the easy way out is kind of very simple. Don't do it. I don't stand for it. Suicide is the worst answer to anything. So for me, that is my stance. But keeping that aside, this song makes me think. Maybe, maybe, who knows? They found that there was no other option left for them. And that's where counseling comes into play. A good counselor, and there are a lot of good ones out there, and a lot of horrible ones out there. A lot many horrible ones. Or not so good ones. A good counsellor 
will always guide you to continue your journey in this life. So they will guide you gently and steer you away from suicide. A not so good counselor doesn't give a damn. So hence, there are a lot of suicide in this world, but I would still say counseling can help. Especially a counseling by a good counselor or an experienced counselor will help anyone going through those hollow years. There's those hollow years, it will not be a burden for you anymore. You will be able to combat it. You will be able to be uh, come out on top of it and feel on top of the world after that, after going through that uh, battle. And you, in fact, you will start thriving in those situations. So that emptiness, what you felt before, that hopelessness, that emptiness, those hollow years, it will actually become you know, your growing years, you will actually grow and grow and grow and you'll actually realize the value of being alive, of living. Beautiful song, definitely thought provoking. Did you see it the same way, Kirti, if you just want to speak on the hollow years aspect, the crashing down of those hollow years, the cloud vanishing, uh, which was drenching you, the stone being lifted off your shoulder once you're uh, you know, really? taken out in the water or relieved. What are your thoughts on that? I once thought that he was talking about or they were singing about somebody's uh, committing suicide. I thought somebody realizing that how they have been living in fear. I didn't think they actually ended it. They are ending that fear. They are ending all that, you know, that was uh, restricting them. They are ending or they are breaking away from the barriers. So I felt, uh, I don't know, I could be wrong, uh, what they wrote and what I understood. But I thought that it was all about, you know, breaking those barriers, breaking free of all the shackles, breaking, you know, getting out of that rock that, you know, they've been living under and things like that. I didn't see that whether they died or they didn't. So that no, the part, second one, I I'm not sure yeah. about. The yeah. first one, I'm sure that the okay, person... Okay, maybe at that time, uh, I was... No, I, I was sure that the person died. He did, okay. Whether it was suicide, even I'm not sure. Okay, okay. It's just I'm giving my interpretation uh -huh. of what I felt it's uh -huh. about. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when we talk about counseling as a, I won't call it just a profession. It's to, you know. It to, saves lives. Yeah. Uh, something that, you know, confines it into uh, money making or somebody trying to make a career out of it. When it is not a career, if somebody has the uh, inborn uh, it's gift. It's a calling. Yeah. If you have the uh, gift in you and uh, you can do it even without any qualification any uh, you know uh, proper training but you had the knowledge of it to get you know get things working for you it's enough that way also just like you know doctors are healed for saving lives of people every single day I mean in whatever way they are helping and you know most of the time saving somebody or the other's life the counselors to play a similar role each time you've deterred someone from doing something like that you have saved that life. You have to, you know, keep count of that so that you keep on reminding yourself how important you are in this scheme or in um, in society. Because each time you have stopped someone from taking that uh, harsh decision, you have saved that life. Yeah, and it's not also the direct saving of lives yeah. that matters. It's the indirect, indirect saving, saving of millions saving of, of lives so every lives. year by counselors all over the world. Yeah. In relationships, because... If when you help them with their relationships with others. So many lives are, and, you know. Yeah, and also in their own pursuit of their purpose, fulfillment of their purpose. And you help them as a coach, as a counselor in those aspects. You're also saving their life. Because you're making their life worth living. I, I not only look at one person who's And you're making their relationships thrive who, and prosper and continue. So you're also saving lives. Of in everyone that sense. around. Yeah. I also look at everyone around with that person. It's their family member, it's their children, it's their wife, it's the parents or whoever was around with them and who would have suffered and who, whose lives would have been, you know, in a um, different situation than, you know, you could have turned it into. So it's basically, you know, doing, you're doing a lot when you're uh, doing something like that. Uh, so it's definitely not just a profession. It's something that, you know, holds things together you know it's one of those pieces of the puzzle that is most important to hold things everything together in society and you know in uh, for a person's well-being uh, when uh, we talk about hollow years um, a lot of people you know uh, fail to experience the same life even though they have the same time uh, you know a person living up to 40 can turn into 
Elvis Presley, a person living up to 40, has turned into nobody. A person living up to 40 uh, could be a burden on others around. A person uh, living up to 40 could be a suicide bomber. A person, to, you know, uh, living up to 40 could be anything. You know, there are so many people and so many things, but they have lived that same amount of time, same amount of second, millisecond, minute, hour, day, months and the years but what you have been and what how you have thought that what your purpose was according to that you're living and some people don't even have that purpose or they don't even have that clarity that what exactly are they supposed to be doing and thus you know so much chaos so much confusion so many uh, things that you know people create it's basically they, they leaving people and then they have no direction what whatsoever to do. So they are just going on doing something or the other. Something clicks, some things don't. Uh, but, you know, as a society, we don't really do much about it when people lack purpose, when people are clueless about life, when people have nothing to do and they don't know what exactly to do. And then, you know, uh, we all live in this fear that the world is this way, people are that way, society is dangerous, you know, we are living in crazy times and all. But nobody is really sitting and thinking about it. Nobody is really sitting and talking about it. Nobody is really doing anything about it. What can you do to change? What can you do to make people understand what could be their purpose? Yeah, I mean, we focused this reaction video, We've, I mean, it ended up being focused on the lyrics but wow, oh, the gentle the, nature of the weird. voice and the way it was the, the of music the singer, playing. the gentle, the guitar haunting soothing, thing. relaxing nature of the music, that guitar, wow, it was beautiful. I can still played. play the tune. It's so I gentle, it's so relaxing, it's so soothing. Absolutely brilliant arrangement of the music, absolutely brilliant tune. It's what a beautiful voice, so controlled, so mellow, so soft, so gentle. The whole tune is just. Wow, when that line comes in, carry me to the show line. It's just so gentle and relaxing. You know, you, you literally feel lifted at that moment. As a listener, I literally felt as if I was lifted. You know, carry me to the show line. I felt as if I was being carried to the show line. It is so gentle, so soft, so immaculately arranged and presented to us in our ears. Absolutely brilliant by Dream Theatre, Hollow Years. Unfortunately, what have I heard of Dream Theatre so far? I've heard, heard very little. But what have I heard is mostly the heavy stuff. Yeah. So when I listen to something like this, I say, I hope they have more tunes like that. Because this shows, they can be one of the best Great. bands out there. You know, they this could have been, genius. if they are still around, they can still be one of the best bands out there. Because this is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, you can't hear, you don't have too many bands making music like this. I can think of another band which I thought of while listening to it was Aerosmith. You know, Aerosmith, wow. Some of their softer tunes uh, with the music also there in them. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, Dream Theatre showed they can be kind of an Aerosmith, although they won't sound like Steven Tyler. They won't sound like the musicians of Aerosmith. But if you get what I mean, they, can, they also have a softer gentler side like dream on of aerosmith you know absolutely amazing i definitely thought of dream on in a weird way i thought of dream on of aerosmith while listening to the hollow years today that's it for this one check out our patreon page to make more requests for such uncut unscripted impromptu genuine and honest reactions you won't get it anywhere else in the world let alone youtube